So for the second straight year, BYU beats Houston 33-25 this year. Not quite the shootout that they had last year. Uh, but it was one of those uncomfortable wins. Jump out to the quick 23-0 lead and then completely and totally fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a silver lining? Because it sure felt good early if you're a Cougar fan, but not so much by the end of the score. Yeah, this didn't feel like a top 25 type of a team win. I mean, you have three turnovers. You didn't get any takeaways yourself. Uh, you end up giving away so many points off of those turnovers, 17 points off of those turnovers, and, and it's just a sloppy game. I mean, when was the last time that a team had 325 yards rushing and you went, boy, that felt ugly? <laughs> I mean, you have 500-plus yards of offense. You outgain your opponent by 200 yards, and you only beat him by eight points. That's why it felt nasty. The stats were completely non-reflective of how bad this game went for BYU. But, hey, a win is a win. A brutal amount of turnovers, a brutal amount of penalties. I mean, just sloppy, sloppy. Did you feel like they've gotten past some of that once we saw the dominating win against Texas, that perhaps it was just first-game jitters? Now that we've seen it, a second game. Two out of three games have been really sloppy. Is this a point of concern? Well, I think it has to be a point of concern. And you know, and, and sloppy is the, the best word to describe kind of what we saw. The after. Nicest word. <laughs> it was the <laughs> nicest word to describe. You know, at the end of the day, you're three and zero, and it's easier to work on things when you're three and zero versus two and one. So that's the silver lining in the whole thing is that they're three and zero for the first time since 2008. But yes, there's certain things that need to be focused on, and that's kind of you know. These turnovers that keep happening and the penalties that, that take scores off the board for BYU. There were a couple of times, one touchdown, Devon Blackman would have had a touchdown early. It was called back. BYU was, BYU was able to overcome that, but then as BYU's driving, they end up having to settle for a field goal because of a holding call. And those things, those drive killers, just things that you just can't do, especially for a team like BYU that needs to not just win. And, and I know it's unfair to talk about, BYU, if they really want to get into the playoff talk and all that, you can't just win. You've got to win big, and those things hurt you. One of the things that we've we've seemed to have seen as, as far as the Texas game and this game, when things get close, when things get a little nerve-wracking, what happens? Taysom Hill takes over, and that's what happened in the second half. It, it's like, listen, guys. I'll, I'll be a good teammate until you are no longer trustworthy, and then Taysom just takes it on himself. 26 rushes, a, a, a 170 plus yards. I mean, really an impressive Heisman caliber performance by Taysom, but nevertheless, I, I just can't help but every time I see that guy go to the ground and people are diving at him and going after his head and late hits, how much longer can, can he continue to carry this kind of workload? Jamal Williams and, and Taysom had 54 rushes between the two. I mean, that's a that's an outrageous number for two guys to carry this kind of load. Yeah, and you know, I mean, when you when you see the game like this and you say, okay, in the second half, it just looked like he wasn't going to throw the ball at all. You just didn't see any attempts to make those passes. The the, the pocket kept collapsing, and on the other side of the ball, the defense could not get pressure. Yeah. On O'Corn the entire night, it seemed like, and that was a that was a difference maker as well. And if they did get any pressure, it it was it was very little, and it, and it didn't make as much of a difference. Now they get Virginia. Now mm -hmm. now they have nine days to prepare for Virginia, heal up those bumps and bruises. Uh, this short week, playing on Thursday, Broncos said bumps and bruises have to have to heal faster. Well, they don't actually heal faster just because you have an earlier game. So finally, nine game, nine days uh, to, to recover. BYU is looking for a little revenge after that devastating opening season loss last year. Uh, again, I think everyone assumes a win. How do they get that win? Well, I, I think a lot of it is we, we saw what BYU can do at UConn and how they can score pretty much at will when things are working right and everybody's following their assignments and they're executing and not turning the ball over. We saw what they could do at Texas. In the first quarter and a half, we saw the BYU team we had seen in the first two games. Then it got sloppy. I, I understand we're focusing a lot on that, but let's look at, as a whole, BYU has been really good these first three games. So I think that's more the norm than what we saw in the second half and some of these miscues. So I fully expect them to come out and as you mentioned, kind of a revenge game against Virginia. I, I think it's all about execution with BYU. And offensively, the offensive line play is critical for what BYU does on offense. When they play well, Taysom plays well, Jamal plays well, and the offense moves. And offense, uh, offensive linemen need to stop, stop getting thrown out of games. Uh, nevertheless, a big win. 
three and zero, perfect. Probably not going to drop out of the top twenty five. Uh, you're afforded a few ugly wins, I think, throughout the season, but definitely need to have some of these rolling first quarter type performances stretched out over an entire game. So for the Cougar Sports Saturday guys, Alex Carey and Jason Shepard, I'm Dave Noriega for Sportsbeat.